Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about this three part inequality with an absolute value in the middle part. Okay, so you can see that there was the absolute value function here, absolute value x plus one, that's between two and five. Um, not equal to two, but it's equal. it can be equal to five. And we want to find the set of x values that will satisfy this inequality here. So how do we do that? Um, this is another problem that you won't see in your, um, usually you won't see in your basic algebra textbook, but <clears throat> it doesn't mean that we cannot solve it, right? Because we just use the same ideas, what you would learn in a basic algebra textbook, and then you can still solve the inequality. So I'm, uh, in this video, I'm going to present two ways to solve it. One is by graphing. And so I have the xy plane right here, and then let's just try to graph it and see what's going on, okay? So first, um, let me just, just write down what I'm gonna do here. So one way to do it is by graphing, okay? And then first, I'm going to just claim that the middle part is the function x plus one with the absolute value. So absolute value x plus one, okay? So that's really just saying that what we are trying to find the x value so that uh, two is less than f of x and then less than or equal to five. So that means the function is between two and five. Now, what we wanna do first is to graph the function. We wanna graph this f and then we wanna see where the function is between two and five. And when we say, where the function is between two and five, we are talking about the y values of the function. Okay, as you can see that usually we claim that y is equal to f of x. So we are talking about the y values between two and five. Okay, so first, if we are graphing the function, then uh, we look at this absolute value function here. The plus one tells you that if you know the graph of the uh, y equals absolute value x, the parent function, then all you need to do is that you are going to move one unit to the left, right? Because this is a horizontal translation. You just move the whole reshape graph one unit to the left. Starting from the origin here, because that's where the vertex is for the parent function. So if you move one unit to the left, then you are going to get that vertex to be right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put down the vertex and then I'm going to construct my reshape graph right here, like this one. Okay. So now I think that would be good enough. And then what I'm going to do is to just make my reshape graph. Then you can see that this is our function f. Okay, so now we want to see, we can actually pretend that the two is a function, the five is a function. We can pretend that they're constant functions. So what I mean by that is that I'm going to say that, okay, so we have a constant function y equals two. Okay, and how do we graph that? It's just a horizontal line, right? So we are going to just graph that right here. It's a horizontal line, y equals um, two. So y equals two right here. And then we also have the what? We also have the other one, the upper bound for the function, and that's going to be y equals five. Okay, so let's just graph that also. Right, And then when we graph that, then we have, let me see, so one, two, three, four, and five. So it's right here. So that means we are going to, okay, so that's too bad. I really think that I should actually extend this portion of the reshape graph here. So let me just redo it quickly. Okay, so if I extend it, then you can see where they cross. Okay, that's good so far, right? And then that's equal to, uh, I mean, that's y equals five. And so uh, we only want the portion of the function that's between those two horizontal lines. So isn't that obvious where the function is? You can actually see, you can actually just shade that part of the function. And so what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to just shade it right now, which is this part right here. So this is the part that I want. And then also on the other side of the y-axis. 
Okay, so once you look at those two portions right here, uh, if we look at the x values, then we actually will be able to come up with a solution to the to, that will satisfy this inequality because we're finding the x values so that the V-shaped graph is between y equals five and y equals two. Okay, and I also just want to point out one thing here be, regarding those inequalities right here. There was an equal sign here. That means it's okay for f to be equal to five. That means we are going to put a solid dot right here. So I'm just going to make it a really big solid dot so that now it's obvious. And then same thing for this one. Now this one, because it's actually uh, on the border of the xy plane, so it's harder for us to see what the x value is, but we'll talk about that later. Now let's finish putting the endpoints. So there is no equal sign here for this inequality. That's really just saying that f must be strictly greater than 2, so it cannot be equal to 2. So that means we are going to put an open circle right here. Then I'm actually exaggerating it so that it's easy for us to see. Okay, so now once we get that, then we are ready to write down the x values. So you can see that we are going to take the set of all x values starting from 1, right? As you can see, this is 1 right here, all the way to, let me see, 1, uh, this is 2, 3, and 4, right? So we are going to go to 4. But remember, you can only be what? You can only be including um, the 4. You can only be including the 4, but you are not going to be including the 1. So you're going to get an open circle right here, and then you are going to take all that, right? That's all the x values that we want. So now on the other side, then we are going to just do the same thing. This is negative one, negative two, negative three. So we are gonna start with negative three right here. And again, it's going to be an open circle. And then you will just take all the X values uh, less than negative three until you hit to, um, what is that? This is, this is what? This is negative four, negative five. And then see that if you go one more unit, to the left, then you are going to get negative six. So we do have the negative six right here. And just looking at those shaded uh, intervals on the lumber line, then you actually already have the solution. What is the solution here? Um, so the solution, solution would be what? <clears throat> would be um, from negative six, actually negative six must be included, as you can see, negative six to negative three, okay? And then union, or the set of x values that are between one and four, right? So we have one and then four here. The union means that we either take an x value from this set or we will take the x value from this set. And so those values would satisfy this three point inequality here. So that's how you can do it by just looking at a graph. Just, um, just look at the graph of the function, look at the graph of the two and the five, right? And then understand where uh, the y values are. And then so you can come up with the corresponding x values. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Um, another way, another way to do it, is to just solve it like how you usually solve a three-part inequality. But this time, you also need to just worry about the absolute value at the same time, okay? So we are going to... <clears throat> you can also test points, but I would say that it's probably just easier if you just deal with the absolute value, right? By, by algebra, right, by just solving it algebraically. So how do I do that? Um, it's this. <clears throat> there are two cases right here. Um, if you just understand how this inequality behaves, it's saying that once you take the absolute value of x plus 1, the output that you are getting from this function f, it's going to be, be what, between 2 and 5. Okay, so that's when you have taken the absolute value already. That means there are more possibilities for the x plus one. So two subcases right here. One is that when the stuff inside the absolute value is positive, 
Okay, if it's positive and it's between two and five, then once you take the absolute value, it will still be between two and five, right? Because when x plus one is positive, you can simply just remove the absolute value. So the inequality becomes what? The inequality becomes two less than x plus one, and then less than or equal to five. See that you do not need to worry about the absolute value anymore. And then can we solve this one? Really easy, right? So you just need to isolate the x in the middle. So you're gonna subtract one from every part right here. So you just subtract one. Let me just use a different color right here. So subtract one from everything, right? As you can see. So those ones will get canceled and then you're gonna get one less than x less than or equal to four. So you can see that x will be between one or uh, and four, right, including the four. So that's actually giving us this interval right here. The other way, I mean, the other uh, possibilities, right, the other possibility would be when x plus one is negative. You may say, what if x plus one is equal to zero? If x plus one is equal to zero, then when you take the absolute value, it's still equal to zero. It cannot be between two and five, so we're not going to be considering that case. So now if x plus one is negative, but when you take the absolute value, it can still be between two and five, right? So what do we do? We are going to take out the absolute value, but this time we are going to have an extra minus sign in front of the x plus one. So that's the, there is a minus sign that you need to be um, putting right here. Okay, so you gotta put that right here. It's really just saying that, okay, the stuff inside the absolute value is negative. What happens when you remove the absolute value? You are going to negate the stuff that's inside, which is already negative. So when you negate the, a negative quantity, you're gonna get a positive quantity and you want that quantity to be between two and five. Same thing here, we are gonna just solve it like how we usually deal with the three part inequality. So what do we do? We can just multiply everything by negative one, which would actually give you negative two. But don't forget that you are supposed to be switching the inequality symbol when you multiply the whole inequality by, negative, uh, by a negative number, then you are gonna get x plus one in between and also switch that symbol. And then that five right here will become a negative five. So now can we uh, solve for x? Yes, we just subtract one from everything, right? Subtract one, subtract one. And then as you can see right here, those will get canceled. So what do we get here? We get negative three greater than x greater than or equal to negative six. And if you don't do, if you don't really want the absolute value symbols to be pointing this way, I mean, if you don't want a greater than or greater than or equal to symbols, you can actually just switch the order of writing it. So you're gonna get negative six less than or equal to x. Okay, that's too bad. Let me rewrite it. Less than or equal to x, less than negative three. And so now you are getting that, the other interval. Okay, so that's, that's just what? That's just this inequality gives you this part of the solution here. And then that one gives you this one here. And then yes, so it would be either this case or that case, right? You have, you can have X between one and four, including the four, or you can have X between negative six and negative three uh, can be equal to negative six also. Okay, so there are two ways to do it. And uh, this is our usual algebra way. The only extra thing that you need to do compared to a basic algebra problem that you will usually see in an algebra textbook is that you also have to deal with the absolute value. That's the only difference. The other, the other, um, um, the other steps are actually the same. Um, but you can see the graphing by doing by doing the graphing by solving this inequality by using just graphing the function. It's really neat, as you can see. It's actually. Um, if you ask me, I would say that this would be even easier and more straightforward to understand compared to the algebra way. Okay, so that's it for this problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you.